Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Basically, ever since ChatGPT was released, one of the things that people have been intrigued by is the possibility that it could help them make more money. Now, obviously, some of that is in the form of new entrepreneurial endeavors, heightened productivity, more ability to output things than you were before. Alternatively, there have been folks who have recognized that a paradigm shift like this creates a lot of need and opportunity for people to be Sherpas of that change to create courses, prompting lessons, anything like that that help people acclimate to this new environment. But for some, the pursuit of AI's opportunity to make them more money has been a little bit more simple. And the premise is, if these tools are so smart, can they pick stocks and make investments? There are effectively infinite experiments to this degree. The one we're looking at now is from back in April and March of 2023, where Finder.com used ChatGPT to put together a dummy portfolio of 38 stocks that gained 4.9% while 10 leading investment funds had an average loss of 0.8% in the same period. In July of 23, Mustafa Suleiman, who was at the time still at inflection, but obviously would end up running Microsoft's AI endeavors, and he wrote a post for the MIT Technology Review about an alternative Turing test that wouldn't just be about whether AI could successfully imitate humans, but whether it could actually make money. Specifically, his proposal was that the new Turing test would be to see if AI can make a million dollars. Now, Mustafa was more thinking about an AI that could design a business from the ground up. He wrote, To make a million dollars, it would need to go far beyond outlining a strategy and drafting some copy, as current systems like GPT-4 are so good at doing. It would need to research and design products, interface with manufacturers and logistics hubs, negotiate contracts, create and operate marketing campaigns. It would need to, in short, tie together a series of complex real-world goals with minimal oversight. But of course, the first AI to actually become a millionaire was an unhinged bot released on Twitter that got Mark Andreessen to send it $50,000 in Bitcoin and then created its own meme coin that at peak had a fully diluted value of $600 million. Now, if you know anything about crypto and fully diluted value, you'll know that the simple math by which we get that $600 million valuation, i.e. price of token times number of tokens, doesn't hold up to the real world. And of course, in retrospect, Truth Terminal was mostly an interesting experiment on the path to broader endeavors. And yet still, that idea that maybe AIs could pick stocks and invest, and actually make serious money, has never really gone too far away. One new experiment that I noticed recently is called Comet Portfolio. It comes from Morgan Linton, the CTO of an e-commerce services company called Bold Metrics, who is giving Perplexity's new agentic browser a mission to make as much money in the stock market as possible. Morgan set up Comet Portfolio with $1,000 in a Robinhood account and some general instructions on how to research stocks. Importantly, Morgan basically said that he has pretty much no idea when it comes to investing, so it's not like he's putting his thumb on the scale here. Linton is documenting everything on X via a new account called Comet Portfolio. As part of the setup, the agent first figured out how to do research, real-time news checks, and present trade ideas directly in the Robinhood window for Linton's approval. This was all getting set up over last weekend. And on Monday morning, the grand experiment commenced. The first day was a little bumpy. Morgan writes, Okay, first agentic trading session with Perplexity Comet is done. It didn't go very smoothly, unfortunately. There seems to be a bug where the Comet assistant thinks it has filled out the amount field, but it hasn't. Also, it kept forgetting that it was doing the trading agentically and would switch to giving me instructions, and I had to remind it that it is my agentic trader. There's also a weird bug where it says it's going to buy one stock, but is actually navigating to a different page to buy a different stock. That being said, I'm a patient guy, and I know these are still the early days. I think I'm probably the first person to trade stocks with Comet, so I'm ready for all the bumps in the road. In the end, it did deploy close to $1,000 and built an initial portfolio. Linton was also able to create a custom dashboard in Perplexity Labs to track the portfolio. And right now, I think it's too early to really tell how this experiment is going to shake out. In some ways, in fact, there's really two totally different experiments going on here. One is an experiment, yes, in stock trading and how an AI would construct a portfolio. But the other is just about agentic capabilities. Those problems that Morgan shared from that first day weren't about the AI making weird stock choices. It was about figuring out the right modes of interaction between humans and agents in the context of this new perplexity browser. Now, when it comes to where the portfolio's allocations are so far, it is a pretty standard tech-heavy portfolio. It's concentrated in Amazon, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Meta, and Google, has a little bit in Berkshire Hathaway, and interestingly, it has about 1% in ETH and 2% in Bitcoin which reads almost entirely like the agent went out and read some very, very standard conventional wisdom financial advice and constructed the portfolio as such. And so far, that seems like one of the limitations here. 
Basically, unless you prompt the agent to really go out there and do something different, it's just going to be an instantiation of conventional investing wisdom, which is going to put together a pretty standard portfolio. Now, there is another interesting experiment, however, going on over Reddit, where a high school kid named Nathan Smith gave ChatGPT $100 to trade with. However, instead of giving the chatbot the goal of picking the best stocks overall, he gave it the constraint of only trading smaller companies with less than $300 million in market cap. Interestingly, the experiment initially was something different. At first, it was a six-month experiment to see whether ChatGPT or DeepSeek could beat the market with a microcap portfolio. However, in the first week, DeepSeek really underperformed. DeepSeek underperformed the Russell 2000 by 20%, while ChatGPT in the same period actually beat the Russell 2000 by a little under 7%. And so the experiment refocused to just concentrate on ChatGPT. Now, part of what makes this experiment more interesting is the difficulty of investing in small cap companies. As you've already guessed, the major index for this segment is called the Russell 2000, which is sort of the small cap equivalent of the S&P 500. The range of companies in the 2000 small caps that make up the index is enormous, from biotech firms to manufacturers to cosmetics. Quality in this area is wildly varied. It's not uncommon for stocks to go to zero. And sometimes companies in this range can turn out to be complete frauds. All of which makes it kind of a more interesting place to have an experiment to see how AI can do. Now, after four weeks, ChatGPT is performing really well. The chatbot is up 23%, while the Russell 2000 index is up only 3.9%. That is significant outperformance, suggesting that this isn't just luck. The chatbot chose four stocks to start its portfolio. It actually took a major drawdown early on in the process, losing almost 7% on the Friday of the first week. After that, however, it reassessed and did research on 25 different stocks it might want to switch to. It determined that none of them beat the risk and reward ratio of its current holdings and decided to sit pat. Smith didn't like the choice, writing, Honestly, I thought it would be a complete breakdown after Friday, but it still feels confident in its thesis. Not many traders can lose 7% of their account in a day and make zero changes. I was a little worried it would fall into a cycle of picking companies and giving up after like a week, but that hasn't happened at least yet. Now, the choice to hold was vindicated the following week as the portfolio regained the loss. And again, since then, the chatbot has made a handful of strategic trades and gotten itself up to this nearly 24% gain. Now, maybe the most interesting part of this is that the chatbot is performing some fairly complex financial analyses to make its decisions. The portfolio is largely focused on biotech firms, which are notoriously difficult to trade. Doing well in that corner of the market requires a huge volume of research to figure out which drug trials are coming up, their likely outcomes, and things like that. ChatGPT seems capable of figuring out what these catalysts are and making some well-informed guesses about future outcomes. Greg Eisenberg was blown away by this experiment and wrote a long thread about the implications. One of his concerns was actually something that former SEC chair Gary Gensler brought up last year in front of Congress. Greg wrote, There will be a massive market crash caused by too many AIs making the same trades. When millions of ChatGPT instances start following similar logic, you get dangerous herding behavior. The Reddit user asked to buy microcaps, and it only bought biotech. Imagine this at scale. Now, I'm not so sure about this one. I understand the concern, and I think it's a legitimate concern. However, my instinct is that there is a fundamental inflection point that we have not hit yet. That is the difference between an agent using conventional investing wisdom to repeat best patterns and an agent actually throwing out the conventional wisdom to try unorthodox or contrarian strategies. Now, one of the things with markets is that everyone sees everything else that's going on, and so a contrarian strategy one day becomes conventional wisdom the next day. But my instinct is that people are not going to deploy AI en masse, and certainly not autonomously, until such time as they believe that the AIs are actually going to offer something different than just some carefully managed best practices. Basically, I don't think that people are going to hand over control to AIs in the phase where they would all just do the same thing. That was just one of the 14 implications that Greg saw from the study, though. In another, he wrote, financial advisors will become AI prompt engineers. Instead of picking stocks, they'll craft the perfect instructions for AI systems and charge clients for their prompting expertise. The thing that's interesting about this is that this isn't exactly novel. It's pretty much what we're seeing with all professional industries in some ways. Your expertise still matters, but the way that you monetize that expertise is changing dramatically. And what's more, usually that's going to involve managing some number of agents that do the thing that you used to do, but with you as the overseer. Now, some of Greg's other predictions that relate to retail absolutely have the ring of truth to me. Greg writes, day trading will be completely dominated by AI within 18 months. Humans won't be able to compete with AI that can process earnings calls, news, and social sentiment in real time. Every retail investor will have an AI trading assistant by 2027, not managing their money directly, but whispering suggestions in their ear based on news they'd never read themselves. Investment newsletters will pivot to selling winning prompts instead of stock picks. Why give you fish when they can sell you the AI fishing rod? Someone will build a social network for AI trading strategies. 
Think GitHub for investment prompts where successful strategies get forked and improved by the community. I think that all of these are dead on predictions. Retail investing in America is a very interesting space. Anyone who has watched the rise of GameStop and crypto and meme stocks knows that there is more than a little bit of what some might see as a devil may care, screw it, let's go kind of attitude, which others have characterized all the way as financial nihilism. The point is that this is a group that's going to be extremely receptive to trying anything that they think can give them an edge. And my guess is that there will be enough interesting opportunity in the intersection of AI and trading that those experiments will happen very, very fast. Sometimes when I'm doing this show, I have a feeling of how fast it's going to look extremely quaint based on how quickly the world has changed. And boy, is this show that. I really hope that you listen to this in the next couple of days after I release it, because I wouldn't be surprised if by September, half of these predictions from Greg and half of the things that we talked about today are just completely de rigueur and normalized. In any case, these are really interesting experiments. Thanks to Morgan and Nathan for publishing your experiments in a way that we can all enjoy and interact with. For now, though, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you guys listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.